Hi guys, it's Zara with ZaraPhD.com and author of Minimalist Homeschooling and creator of Simple is the New Smart. And I'm here with tutorial number five in our Minimalist Homeschooling tutorials. We're going to continue. This is our last day probably for a few more tips about how you can right away start filling your homeschool with exactly what you need and what you love so that it can be simple, focused, and valuable. And I wanted to remind you that these are brief little bite-sized portions of my convention talks from the Great Homeschool Convention last spring. So let's go on. First one today is get excited. So if you're trying to look for a filter about how you should decide what to include in your homeschool, ask yourself if you are excited about it. And if it is something you really think that you need, but you're not excited about it, think about maybe are you excited about your children knowing it, even though you may not be excited about the process of learning it? Um, or is there a way that you could get more excited about how you learn it, right? So are you excited about it? That's a really great way to fill your homeschool with exactly what you love and what you need. Okay, the second one is today is plan unplanned time. Unplanned time won't just automatically happen. We have this automatic sort of natural tendency to fill up whatever time we're given. So unless you intentionally and deliberately set aside time where you have um, no plans, no appointments, no activities, maybe one day a week, you don't have to leave the house if you don't want to. Plan unplanned time, okay? The next one is allow contingency time. So teachers in public schools are masters at this. They know how long it's gonna to take to transition from one thing to the next, to the next. Homeschoolers, not so much. So every project manager is going to have a contingency budget, right? This is just in case things run over a little more than you expected. And when we're homeschooling, we are project managers in a sense, and our budget is not money. It is time. That's what we have to budget. And so include contingency time, 20, 25% is great. And that will allow you enough time to breathe in between your subjects, to dive deeper into some subjects if you want to. It allows for um, things that need more explanation than you expected and so on and so forth. And if you don't use your extra budget of time, then you do exactly what other project managers do, which is you enjoy the surplus at the end of the day. So um, not such a bad scenario, is it? Okay, the next one is try putting your entire schedule on a looping style schedule. And here's how that goes. You may plan out your lessons. Monday, you expect to get these subjects done. Tuesday, this. Wednesday, this. Now take all dates and times off of your plan. Just start with the first thing, work through it. When you're done with one day's worth of work, start on the next one. In this way, you know that how many days worth of work you're completing, but you're not giving yourself the added stress of making sure that math happens from 10 to 10.30 a.m. on Monday morning, right? So why add that extra stress? We have the luxury as homeschoolers that we don't have to add that stress to our schedules. I'm gonna put a link in the comments here. If that's something that interests you, I have an entire blog post about that. So, the next one is quit. <laughs> we are all about filling our homeschools with exactly what is needed and what is loved. If something is not working for you, quit. Whether or not you have finished, whether or not you spent good money on it, or whether or not you should do it. Quit, reevaluate, figure out the best way to meet your family's needs and loves, okay? But don't be afraid to quit. Okay, and um, there's a great quote from Courtney Carver, if you don't have time to do what matters, stop doing things that don't. Okay, that's powerful, guys. Okay, so uh, the next one is schedule to do days. So again, we often come up with all of these little things that need to be done, and it can create a lot of mental clutter. And it can also create a lot of multitasking in our homeschools, neither of which are really conducive to having a calm and peaceful existence as a homeschooling mother. And so schedule to-do days. Put days on your calendar where you will get your to-dos done. I'm gonna link to another video where I talk about this more specifically. I'm not gonna go into the details here. Okay, so the next one is batch. So people think of batching when they think about batching, maybe they're cooking. Um, a lot of offices will batch different office tasks. In your homeschool, you can batch. I call these in-home camps for my kids because they love the sound of that. But if there is something that you are not getting to, 
as often as you would like for whatever reason, consider batching it, consider having an intensive on that subject. And again, I'm going to link to a blog post on this in case you want to know more about it. Okay, so remember the big picture. This is for my Christian homeschoolers, okay? Again, if we're filtering out exactly what we don't need and don't love and we want to remove those, let's think about does our education direct our focus toward God or distract from him? And obviously we want to pick the former, not the latter, right? And do our materials, our resources, our lessons, our activities, our schedules, are they helping us fulfill God's purpose in our lives or do they interfere with that purpose? Okay, so two simple questions you can do um, really quickly, journal on those and um, immediately add some simplification and some value to your homeschool. And that's all for today, guys. So I will be back with you for the next portion of the tutorials where I'm going to talk more about scheduling. We all have only 168 hours each week. So I want to talk to you about how we can be really intentional about that, how we can gain more by doing less in the time that we have available. So if you appreciated these baby steps, but you really need something needy to make a huge difference in your homeschool, I do have a course. It's a minimalist homeschooling masterclass. It's called Simple is the New Smart. I will put a link in the comments and that is where you will find the step-by-step -step guide to transform your homeschool from top to bottom and from now on so that you can have a stress-free and meaningful homeschool. So that's all for today. And until next time, I'm wishing you all the simple things. Bye-bye.